Hello whistleblowers everywhere. Uh, so today I have my new very posh background uh, which uh, I've decided will improve my YouTube uh, watchability and also um, this may be one of the last videos that I will be sporting this glorious beard. Um, yeah, I'm going to shave it off for a charity which is very dear to me called the Veterans Army. Uh, they support uh, veterans in this country and they do an absolutely fantastic job. So, uh, onwards and upwards. So today I'm going to be talking about adding cuts to uh, your tunes. Um, so I'm not going to be going crazy with putting cuts in everywhere, but I'll just put a few cuts in just to show you just how you can sort of start with some simple ornamentation. Uh, so today's tune I'm going to be adding the cuts to um, is a lovely Vincent Broderick tune called The Spider's Web. It's a jig. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to talk a little bit about cuts and show you how I do them and it's my method. Uh, there are other ways of doing things which are equally valid. Uh, a cut is a cut. Uh, and as I've said before in previous videos, um, cuts, rolls, crowns, all those kind of um, ornaments are rhythmic, not melodic. So with the cut, it doesn't really matter the particular note as long as the uh, rhythm is correct and you don't really hear the note when you're doing cuts and um, it's all about the rhythm so to start off with I'm just gonna go up and down the whistle on a recap of a uh, previous video so I'm not gonna spend ages talking about uh, the various different cutting methods it's one of the first whistleblower videos that I did so if you want to backtrack and have a look at that one that'll be useful uh, but what I will do is just give you a little brief breakdown on cuts um, and how I do them. Um, so here we go, just a brief breakdown of cuts to start with. Okay, so cuts. So let's start with the low D. So I cut the low D with the A. Same thing with the E, cut. F sharp, cut. So those three bottom notes we use this finger to cut. So C, sorry, uh, D, E, F sharp. So when we get to the G, I use the A to cut the G, so I'm going that finger for D, that finger for E, that finger for F sharp, that finger for G. So I'm cutting all those with the same finger. Now for the A, I use a cut with the B, or you can use a cut with the C sharp, with the B or the C sharp. And then for the B, yep, you cut with the C sharp. So when I play these, so D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. So. using the same note to cut with all these four notes so and then A or you could go you can even cut the G with the B so So it's up to you if you want to use the B cut for the G, the A and the B, but I like to use A cut for the G, B cut for the A and C sharp cut for the B. Uh, and so for D in the upper register, same thing happens. So 
E, F sharp, G, A, and B. So. So slowly, so I'm cutting again. Same finger for the D, yeah. Middle D, that finger comes off, I'm cutting with that finger. Yeah, E, exactly the same as the lower register. F sharp, exactly the same. G, the same. A, cut with the B, or you, sorry, B, or you can cut with the C sharp. And B, I cut with the C sharp. So, I'll just show you the both registers. upper register and yeah that's pretty much it for cuts we don't generally tend to cut a C natural it's going to be difficult because of the cross fingering uh, and C sharp again we don't tend to do cuts on those two notes uh, you can use other ornaments, which I'll go into uh, on another video regarding the C natural and the C sharp. But for now, we're just going to deal with those notes. So D, E, F, G, A, B, and same in the upper register. So D, E, F, G, A, and B. Right, let's move on and have a look at the most basic version of this tune called The Spider's Web, this jig by Vincent Broderick. Um, I'm going to play it through first without any cuts or any ornamentation at all. So for the notes that are the same, I'm going to tongue them. Um, but on the version where we're adding the cuts, that's a very important use for cuts. Um, so cuts can be used for... A number of different reasons one is to add emphasis to a note and if you add a tongue and a cut it gives it even more emphasis so yep adding an emphasis to a note or it's used to separate notes which are the same rather than tonguing them which I'm going to do in the first example uh, in the next example which we're going to look at after the most basic one this is where we're going to introduce separation of notes by using cuts so here we go this is the first version no cuts just all tonguing and slurring the A part um, the B part which A part we repeat and then the B part starts on the high B also repeated so this is the most basic version of the tune now let's have a look at adding some cuts so the first cuts we'll start just by adding are the notes which are the same to get separation so instead of tonguing we're going to use cuts to separate those two notes that are the same so I'm going to play through the A part and then the B part just going over those notes which are the same and separating them with cuts Okay, so this is the A part, and again, just separating the notes which are the same using cuts. So in the second bar. So instead of going, I'm using my tongue, I'm using a cut. So tonguing and cut. So that's the first 
cut that we're going to use. So the first two measures again. So the second two measures, I don't think there are any notes that come in succession that are the same. So it's just going to go. So second line. So in the second bar of the second line, we've got those two G's again, which were separating with cut. So it's the same uh, as the second bar on the first line. Now in the third measure, we've got the two D's, which we're gonna separate with the cut. So, tonguing or cuts. So let me play through the A part just the first time because the second time bar we just hold that G. Um, so just adding the cuts to separate the two notes. So here we go. One, two. the two D's okay so let's have a look at the B part now so uh, we've got lots of uh, moving notes uh, we don't really have too many notes which are uh, the same note which needs separating by cuts so let's just play through it So immediately we've got the two G's which we're going to separate. So, so it's exactly the same as doing the lower octave G and we're using that finger to cut again. We're using the A to cut. So, And then the second bar, the same two G cuts. So bars one and two on the third line on first part of the B section. So you want to try and get those cuts nice and quick and crisp. What you don't want is this. So we're hearing that A cut. We don't really want to hear the note it's an interruption to the note rather than hearing a separate note. So, so the next two bars. Okay, so last line now. And then on the second bar of the last line, we have a G following the last note G uh, of the first bar. So we're going to cut those. And then we have in the last two bars, we've got uh, the two Ds, which we're separating with tonguing. Sorry, with cuts. So let me play the whole of the B part now, just separating the notes that are the same with cuts. Okay, so let's have a look now at how we can add cuts 
to accent certain notes and bring certain notes out. Uh, just makes things a little bit more interesting. Okay, so we're going to keep the same notes that are the we've already had cut to, which were the uh, notes which were the same. So we were already going to keep those notes, but we're going to add a few um, cuts which are really just ornamental devices to bring certain notes out. Uh, some whistle players use lots of cuts, some whistle players don't use as many, but you'll find that all whistle players tend to use cuts in one way or another. Uh, so really how many cuts you put in is kind of a matter of how you like it, but it's also a matter of taste as well. So if you like cutting lots, then no reason why you can't do that. Um, but again, like any other ornament, it's worth noting that if you overdo cuts, yeah, it can end up sounding a little bit choppy and a little, you know, it, it, it could interrupt with the flow of the tune. So uh, certain keynotes are good to cut. Um, but really, it's kind of a matter of personal taste. There's no 100% right or wrong way of, of adding cuts, uh, which are used as, as ornamentation. Um, it's a matter of just trying it out and see what you like and um, if you like it then use it. But again just with that caveat just be careful not to overly cut everything because then it kind of loses the sense of, of what you're trying to achieve. So you're trying to achieve certain emphasis on notes and if you're doing it on virtually every note then it's, it, it's kind of lost the point of what the cut's there for. Okay, so uh, I'm going to play this version now with uh, adding some strategic cuts. I'm not going to use too many of them, uh, but again, all these tunes are there for you to sort of make your own version of. So, first measure. So I'm going to cut that high G. Um, eventually what I would probably do is a short roll, but for now, uh, I'm just going to cut it, so. So that's bar one, bar two. And so we've already got those two notes, those two Gs separated with cut, so um, I'm gonna leave that as it is. And then bar three. Again, I'm not going to add anything to the bar three. You can if you want, but for now, I'm just going to keep it simple. And when I get up to that high A in bar four, I'm going to cut that as an emphasis and then just let the rest of the notes fall as they would. So first line. So that high A cut. I mean, again, you can use the B, uh, the C sharp. Really no difference at that. The cut's so quick, you don't hear the note. So let me do the first line again for you. That's enough for now. So same thing with the next line. We're going to cut that high G and the two G's in the next bar on the second line. So okay. So the last two measures. So I'm going to cut the G and then that's it. So the whole of the A part, just with some additional cuts. So here we go. And if I repeat it, OK, 
Okay, so the B section. We're starting on that high B, and we've already got those two cuts separating the two Gs. Um, but I like to put a nice cut on that very high B. So, so I'm tonguing and cutting at the same time. Now that really does give a note, an accent, and an emphasis. So it really does pull it out. So you've got to coordinate your tonguing, the T, with the cut. So that might take a bit of practice, but it's a good skill to have. Um, tonguing cuts give it a little bit more emphasis than just a normal cut. So, so tongue the B and separate the two Gs with cut. And then the next bar. So because I'm going to play that all in the one line, I'm um, only going to tongue that first note, uh, and then I'm just going to cut as I would without tonguing that second high B in uh, the second measure. So, let's do that again. And that's enough, I'm just cutting the first note. So, measures three and four on the third line. So I'm gonna cut the G, that first note in that second group of three. And then the last measure. So, Now you can, if you want, cut the A, the first note on that last measure, but that's a tricky one because you have to go. And so you'd have to tongue that because you have to stop and go back to the B to cut with uh, the B note to cut the A. So again, there's other things we can do with the A, but for now, I would just leave it as it is. Um, so the last line, so we've got the two B's. Now I'm going to cut both of those B's. You don't have to, but um, you may only just cut the first. Or both. And then we've got the G separating. So I'm going to do... Uh, measures one and two on the fourth line now with the G cut to separate those two G's. And again. And again, we've got the two B's, uh, sorry, the two D's uh, in the last two bars, which I'm going to separate, and I'm going to put a cut on that last G note. So the whole of the B section now. Okay, so next I'm going to play the whole tune with those cuts that we've put in. Uh, so have a go and try and play um, with me or have a listen to what I'm doing and try and replicate it yourself. So here we go. Okay, the spider's web with those cuts which we've practiced earlier on. So I'm going to play the whole thing. I'm going to play A, A and B and B because that's the form that you would play if you were doing it, say, in a session. Here we go. So one, two.
Okay, so that just about wraps it up for this uh, little recap on using cuts and adding cuts to your music. Again, it's a matter of taste and where you cut a note and whether you use uh, a tongue cut or just a normal cut. Um, really, just experiment. Have a go and try things out. Um, do be aware that when you're cutting though it will emphasize a note and sometimes if you emphasize a note which isn't uh, a strong note it can give a different emphasis and a different feel to the rhythm which is nothing wrong with that uh, but sometimes that can lead to a little bit of an unexpected lift to a note which is not particularly on a strong beat but that's fine uh, again it's your personal preference and um, I change sometimes where I cut uh, depending on what I'm playing and how many times I've played it. If I've played a tune for years and years and years, it's it's radically different from when I first learnt the tune. So your tunes and your playing will develop and it will change over time. So um, where you are now at the moment and adding these sort of cuts in a very prescribed way um, won't be eventually the way that you would do it because you would make the tune your own. You would add cuts and rolls and taps and all other kinds of ornamental devices uh, to play the tune the way that you like and that's perfectly fine you can even add small variations uh, which I think we've talked about on uh, some of the other tune breakdowns because this isn't really a tune breakdown this is just using uh, this jig as an example of where you would use cuts so anyway I hope you found this useful if you have uh, then I would be very grateful if you could subscribe to the whistleblowers channel uh, I've look I've even got this fantastic whistleblowers backdrop um, so yes please subscribe if you can uh, if you could give me a like uh, if you could share this among whistle players or whistle friends or any friends doesn't matter if they play whistle really but probably better if they do um, so if you can sh yeah if you could just subscribe like the video uh, and let other people know about the Whistleblowers channel because I will be doing some interesting things coming up very soon. I've got ideas um, which I will let you all know about in plenty of time. Um, also planning to do some question and answer uh, YouTube lives which uh, I'm in the process of trying to organise. Uh, that will probably be in early autumn so if you're interested then yeah keep a lookout on the Whistleblowers channel. Okay, folks, it's been great seeing you all and hope to see you again soon. Okay, bye for now. Okay, so that just about wraps it up for this uh, little recap on using cuts and adding cuts to your music. Again, it's a matter of taste and where you cut a note and whether you use uh, a tongue cut or just a normal cut. Um, really just experiment have a go and try things out um, do be aware that when you're cutting though it will emphasize a note and sometimes if you emphasize a note which isn't uh, a strong note it can give a different emphasis and a different feel to the rhythm which is nothing wrong with that uh, but sometimes that can lead to a little bit of an unexpected lift to a note which is not particularly on a strong beat, but that's fine. Uh, again, it's your personal preference, and um, I change sometimes where I cut, uh, depending on what I'm playing and how many times I've played it. If I've played a tune for years and years and years, it's, it's radically different from when I first learnt the tune. So your tunes and your playing will develop and it will change over time. So um, where you are now at the moment and adding these sort of cuts in a very prescribed way um, won't be eventually the way that you would do it because you would make the tune your own. You would add cuts and rolls and taps and all other kinds of ornamental devices uh, to play the tune the way that you like. And that's perfectly fine. You can even add small variations, uh, which I think we've talked about on uh, some of the other tune breakdowns. Because this isn't really a tune breakdown. This is just using uh, this jig as an example of where you would use cuts. So anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you have, uh, then I would be very grateful if you could subscribe to the Whistleblowers channel. 
uh, I've looked, I've even got this fantastic whistleblowers backdrop. Um, so yes, please subscribe if you can. Uh, if you could give me a like, uh, if you could share this among whistle players or whistle friends or any friends, doesn't matter if they play whistle really, but probably better if they do. Um, so if you can, sh yeah, if you could subscribe, like the video uh, and let other people know about the Whistleblowers channel because I will be doing some interesting things coming up very soon. I've got ideas um, which I will let you all know about in plenty of time. Um, also planning to do some question and answer uh, YouTube lives which uh, I'm in the process of trying to organise. Uh, that will probably be in early autumn so if you're interested then yeah keep a look out on the whistleblowers channel okay folks it's been great seeing you all and hope to see you again soon okay bye for now